Well, we want to do to Wednesday, Monday, Bible class at Community Baptist Church, Santa Rosa, California. Our pastor is Reverend Dr. H. E. Turner. My name is Brother Jim Kennedy. Sister Maria Dryers is one that types this lesson so you can read it all with us. So we thank you for that. Start off with uh, scripture, and we got some prayer requests. First, prayer requests for the sick and shutting. And the nose on our prayers. We want to pray for the sick and shutting, Roy and Robert Johnson, Hank and Ann Adels Jordan, Anita Marie Johnson, Scott Aldridge, Harvey jo uh, Johnson, Nick Carter, Deacon Barnabas Duncan, Joseph Hampton, Ken and Virginia Sanders, uh, Rhoda Litsey, Annette Jones, Larry Henry Sr., Raymond Lawrence, Georgia Payton, Eloise Oliver, Bernie Harris, Karen Rockstead, Michael Peterson Jr., Beverly Combs, Reverse Collins, uh, Leah Beaton, and uh, Lindsay Remsen. Uh, we pray for those on the prayer list. We pray for Brother Jacob Anderson for strength. And we cover from illness, uh, Sister Robin Toller for healing of sickness, Deacon Barnum of Duncan for healing and comfort, the Toller family for the loss of Eric Toller, Sister Pam uh, Bringle for, uh, and family for uplifting and protection, uh, the, the Dietrich and Edward family for strength and uplifting, Sister Annette Jones for comfort and healing. From illness, Sister Wally Kimball for continuing healing from surgeries, Mayor Natalie Rogers for uplifting strength and guidance, Johnson family of the rock of Sister Leslie Johnson, the uh, CBC staff, Sister Maria Dyer and Brother Jim Kennedy, Ministries, Reverend Francis, Reverend Parker, and Reverend Sims, Auxiliary Ministries teachers and church family. We pray for our pastor, Reverend Dr. H. E. Turner, for guidance and protection and healing. So we'll start off with uh, our scripture and then have prayer, and then we'll get into our lesson. I want to read uh, Psalms 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitudes of your tender mercy. Let out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from your iniquity, and cleanse me from me. My sins. For uh, so I acknowledge my transgression, my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, uh, that you and me be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity in the sin of my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inner part, and in the hidden part you will make me and long with me. Purge me with high supplement, and I, I shall be clean, and wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that my Lord, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to your joy of your salvation and uphold me by your gentle spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way and soon it shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I will give it. And you do not delight in bird offerings. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure um, to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem, then shall be pleased with your sacrifice of righteousness, with burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings, then they shall offer bulls on your altar. May a blessing be to you here in the reading of Psalms 51 in this title. Let's start with our prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Thank you for once again for this 
time we're going to spend in your word, Lord, your most holy word, Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, you would let the Holy Spirit minister to our hearts, to all those who are watching or going to watch, Lord, and Lord, to me, especially, Lord, as uh, we learn from your lessons and apply it to our lives. Lord, what a great lesson this is for voice. The voice of God never contradicts it in the Bible. Lord. And Lord, we just pray that we study your words and show us yourself approved of the workmen that not be ashamed of your know, word, Lord. We praise you and thank you for this day. We'll give you the praise, Lord, and glory always. We pray in the song in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we got a great lesson for today. And it said, uh, it says, uh, does it, uh, session one, does it agree with the Bible? And the point is the voice of God never contradicts the Bible. The passage is Genesis 3, 1 through 6. The Bible needs life. My mom recently received a disturbing phone call. A person said, Grandma, I'm so glad you answered. He identified himself as Mike. You're always a grandson. He said he had been in a car accident in which the other driver was injured. The police had arrested him and taken him to jail, and they needed him to send money so he could be released on bail. My mother loved her grandson, but something just didn't seem right. She told the caller he didn't sound like the grandson. After all, she had known Mike for his life. He had even lived in her house for a time when he first moved to the city. The caller insists that he was her grandson and surely she did not want him to spend the night in jail. He began to cry and plead with her to help him. Yet my mother knew her grandson's voice and this was not it. She hung up. The world is filled with false and deception voices today and many of them even claim to speak to God. The Bible shows us how we can distinguish between what is valid and what is not. Okay. Genesis 3 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, P.A., had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The first two chapters of Genesis present a breathtaking account of creation and the paradise in which the first couple, Adam and Eve, lived. God provided them with everything necessary to enjoy abundant, joyful, eternal life. As creatures of dust, God breathed life into them and gave them a luxurious garden in which to live and enjoy the close fellowship of their creator. Open uh, the opening of verse chapter 3. I'll let it charge the reader with the fact that there is a snake in paradise. God has declared that every creature he made was good in Genesis 1.25. Yet there is more to this serpent than meets the eye. It is called more subtle than any beast of the field. Biblically uh, subtle is a trait that can be used for good or evil. In Proverbs 12 23. Uh, Genesis doesn't identify the serpents as being inhabited by the devil. Scripture later identifies the serpent with Satan in Revelation 20 22. Let's look at Revelation 20 22. Okay, Revelation 20.22 says, And he laid hold of the dragon and the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. So uh, many uh, sincere Christians worry that they might not be able to discern the difference between Satan's voice and God's voice. They fear that Satan might deceive them into some, doing something that brings them or others harm. However, both God and Satan speaks in ways that are consistent with their nature. 
If you pay close attention, Satan will give himself away. The serpent addressed Eve, but when he said yea, he used the plural, plural each time. This probably indicates that Adam was present also. Hearing what the serpent said in Genesis 3, 6 also mentioned that Adam was with her. Amen. And uh, that's what the Genesis 3, 6. Says, the women and the women who saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasing to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Uh, Satan is the father of lies and the master, uh, and the master. Oh, uh, we see it was in John 8, 44. Let's look at John 8, 44. John 8, 44 says, You are the father, the devil, the rest of your father, we will do it. He was a murderer from the beginning and the door guarded the truth and because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. In his tem temptation of evil, he suddenly lured her to her ruin. Satan questions God's word, yea, as God said, rather than showing God's word outline from the onset, he began to raise in doubt. Anytime someone saying something that causes you to doubt God's instruction, you can be certain it's not God who is speaking. Remember? Satan misrepresents God's word. The serpent asks you, as God said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden. This was a gross misrepresentation of what God has said, in fact. God declared that from every tree of the garden, Thou may eat free in the garden except one, in Genesis 3, uh, 2.16. Uh, God laid an entire paradise before them and told them to freely help themselves do as much as they want. It should be noted that when God gives his instruction on eating from the tree in the garden, Eve had not yet been created. We would hope Adam shared God's instruction with his wife. Nonetheless, people who do not know God's word well will always, uh, well, are always the most vulnerable to Satan's lie. The best defense against deception is being fully aware of the truth. Okay? Satan allows God's character. Imagine bringing a child into a candy shop and then telling them they cannot have any. It would be cruel to treat your children as so it will callous. This is, in effect, what Satan was saying. He implied that God was withholding that was good for man and me. This certainly is one of Satan's favorite deceptions. Rather than pointing out the vast forest of fruit trees from which they could eat, Satan focused solely on a single tree that was forbidden. Any parent who only has one rule their children must follow would be considered a generous and lenient. lenient. Yes, Satan made it seem as if God was cruel and miserable. Mm -hmm. One of Satan's most dangerous weapons is his ability to distort the Bible. God's word is good and it brings life. In Psalms 119.50. Let's look at that. Psalms. Psalms 119.50. This is my comfort in my affliction, and thy word has quickened me. And then in John 6.33.
Amen. For the bread of God is uh, he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Okay. No, 633, I'm sorry, 633, yeah, that's right. Oh, 63, It is the spirit that quickens the flesh, prophets, not in the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Uh, the spirit is a master. The spirit, uh, but Satan is masterful at painting God's word in the most unattractive light possible. Rather than focus on freedom that God commands, on the brain, the Satan will highlight what God, God will forgive. God allowed Adam and Eve to eat the candy knife of family trees in the garden, yet Satan zeroed in on the 1% that was forbidden. He continued to do this day, this today. God forbids adultery uh, so couples can enjoy the maximum pleasure of uh, marital love. Yet the world tries to pay God's standard as uh, okay. Unrealistic and fully restricted. God focused on the treasures He wants to give Satan, focus on the one wonderful thing God was told. God never speaks in a manner that contradicts or dis disparage a word. Uh, he, is, he has clearly spoken. God never communicates in a way that misrepresents His character or His status. Satan, on the other hand, does so continuously. What can cause us to question God's word? I take a scripture out of power for me. I dare to you know I mean it's all right. Um, but uh, even she added to it and uh, Satan kind of uh, made it stand on uh, you know, what it didn't really mean. He just uh, Minimize what it really meant. Uh, so, uh, by I guess by applying God's word to your own understanding instead of what it, what God meant it to be. Genesis three two to three, and a woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said. You should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. He responded to the serpent's misrepresentation of God's instruction with her own distortion. She acknowledged correctly that God had welcomed them to eat the fruit of the tree, but then she added, But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Satan has sought to take away from God's word by claiming he did not eat from any of the tree. This was a blatantly untrue, but he committed a similar error by adding God's command. She added that God forbade them from not touching the fruit. But this was not so. Even also less than God's word, she omitted the word freely and every from God's command. God extended the maximum freedom part freedom possible. He yet stayed with less than God generosity. He, when he left out the word every and freely, she failed to acknowledge God among provision. That's what I was trying to say. He either did not know the truth of God's word or in a conversion with the mockery of God, she was led to Actually, the, the harshness of God's command. Or perhaps she and Adam had determined that the best way not to eat the fruit, the forbidden, forbidden fruit, was uh, to never touch it. Maybe Adam and Eve had made their own rules. Perhaps they agreed not to touch the tree as a safeguard, helping them to maintain the distance from what was, the, what was prohibited. Even if that was the case, he was wrong to add the no-touch restriction as something God commanded. 
the religion, the whole religion made God for salvation, um, sound, especially severe. Often people with the best of intent will add restriction to a Christian life that God never commanded. Following your own personal discipline and conviction can be helpful in maintaining your walk with Christ and a uh, uh, growing closer to Him. But it's never right to make those guidelines equal to the Bible, and it's never right to demand other followers the same guidelines as though they were part of God's Word. Amen. People tend to produce religion that are far more oppressed than what God established. One of the most dangerous things in a person's life is they have truth. There are truths that are partially correct, but they contain falsehood. Such deception can creep into a people's life without them being aware. This can happen when Christians neglect to study the Bible or when they are careless with their doctrine. Some people are naturally drawn to temporizing theories and cosmetic teachers who add their own interpretation to what God has clearly said. They, uh, they may cite a verse of scripture and if their teaching comes from the Bible, but then they venture far beyond the scripture what the scripture says. What are some ways you heard people misinterpret or uh, alter God's word? Um, I can't think of one right away. Um, I have to ponder on that. Okay, uh, Genesis 3, 4, 6. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, that you should be open, your eyes should be open, and you should be as God knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for eating and food, and that it was pleasing to the eye, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, and she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. As long as he, uh, the longer he talked with the servant, the more the gossip, his challenge to God's instruction became. At first, he really questioned God's command, but now he challenged it as false. Stage minimized, minimized the consequence of sin. You should not truly die. Stage will always minimize or dis, uh, discount sin consequences. Why do people commit adultery even though it will destroy their marriage, ruin their reputation, deeply harm their children, dishonor God's holy will, cost their finance, and cost their real job? Because they believe Satan's lie and they will not suffer such consequences. Today, the world is filled with challenge to God's word. God calls certain behavior, but behavior is sin. While Satan declares that you were created to be happy and to uh, pleasure and pursue pleasure, the world declares that the Bible is obsolete and oppressive. Critics distort God's word to try and put it in their own worst life cost. Underneath I mean, it all is Satan, who is a man of admirably opposed to God's word. What are some current examples of our culture that contradicts God's word? Well, um, you know, a lot of things like, you know, like same sex marriage and all that right there. And I don't want to go into politics, but, you know, just different things, you know, you can list a whole bunch of them. So, um, um, Satan insulates the God's withhold good. God created Eve out of the rib of Adam, who placed her in paradise and said to enjoy it. Yet Satan tried to portray God as really and truly because God has one rule and all paradise. 
The road bombards people today with the onslaughting and advertisement trying to convince people that their life cannot be fulfilled unless they have something that God calls sin. The world appears to our fleshly desires. Satan focused on the cost, and Satan focused on the cost of obeying God. And Satan tempts with wisdom and the promise of becoming like God. Imagine how ludicrous it was for the creature only recently put uh, only recently clay now believed she could become like the creator. While this appeared ridiculous to to us as we read, even story Eve's story people succumb to this temptation all the time. Knowledge is seductive, a seductive thing. It fosters pride. It makes people think they no longer need God. Many people grow uh, in almost a way knowledge that comes to believe they do not need the source of knowledge. That they, they, you know, they miss the truth that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. God was said. Attempting to become wise, Adam and Eve did the most foolish thing imagined. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasing to the eye. The fruit appeared as dedicated to eye senses. And things like this now. She allowed her appetite to overrule God's instruction to do them. It appeared that the longer she gazed upon the forbidden fruit, the more attractive it appeared. The fruit also appeared in the desire to make one wise. The only wisdom that they gained was awareness of sin and disobedience. He was not alone. That was right with her. Uh, she gave also some unto her husband with her, and he did eat. The Apostle Paul wrote, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was the transgressor. 1 Timothy 2.14. In other words, Adam knowingly uh, disobeyed whether one sin through ignorance, deception, or overt disobedience is still sin. Our goal is to study to learn to discern the voice of God, but we must consider an equally important matter. We will choose to listen to and follow the voice of God. Adam and Eve knew what God said, and they knew that serpent was the one talking to them. There was no confusion about whose voice they were hearing. In the other, um, it's other unclear the voice we were hearing while we struggled with the same question. Whose voice am I going to listen to? We can know for sure to do that or we can know for sure well, that God will never contradict himself. God will never call us to some to do something that is contrary to what he has said in, in scripture, you know? Let's know the word of God and stay true to it. I'll have some people attempt to change the meaning of God's word in line with their preference. Well, let me answer that. And listen to, uh, below are different areas of life where we can be tempted to all of God's word to justify our thoughts, emotions, and, and uh, actions money, glory, serving, possession, relationship, forgiveness. Sex, time, hobbies, vacation, future, witness, blood combinations are taken to stand for the same deception. So, where she looks good and engage through the week. Then, live it out. How will you live out the truth in the study? Evaluate. List, list the most common ways the world rejects God's word today. Consider why people choose to reject God and His word. Let's write down some decisions you need to make and note the different voices that uh, are rising you. Consider if these voices line up with God's word. Pray for wisdom and discernment to do that which lines up with God's command and the word in Scripture. 
study. Develop a plan of Bible study for the next 12 months where you would intentionally know more about your than you already know. And identify books and Bible studies that will deepen your understanding of God's word. Amen. So those are the things you can do that will help you to learn God's word. Amen. So next week will be uh, session two, doing does it bring conviction? And the passage will be the point will be the voice of God seeks to convict us of the truth. And the passage will be Acts 2, 32 to 41. So let's bow in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessing, Lord, and we do the praise, one and glory always. We thank you, Lord, for, for your word, Lord, as we study and learn the truth, Lord, that we apply to our lives. The Lord, that we Lord, the Father, according to exactly the way uh, your word reads, Lord, that we get the right interpretation and not add our own uh, to, to it, Lord, because you say do not add to my word and take away it, that your word will explain itself. And that God always pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to you, to you, Lord, and that we will stand still until we get your direction. In the way you want us to go, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God, for being our God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being our Father in Jesus Christ, uh, Lord and Savior. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides and directs us each day and every day, Lord. We pray that, uh, Lord, that we will do your word every day. Lord. Tell somebody about Jesus and that he loves them, that he will save them, Lord, if they commit to the his will, Lord. So we thank you, we praise you, and we pray this all in Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for joining. We have a great week and a great day.